I think the state record for yellow eye snapper is around 18 pounds. And I promise you, we were putting those fish on the deck on this trip. Build up to the Yankee cap on the days coming. You know, it's like T minus three days, T minus two days. And we're texting back and forth. The excitement is there. And then before you know it, you're munching on a chicharron, you're sipping a portaito from the first Cuban cafe in the Keys, and then you're in Stock Island and you're at the Yankee Cap. All right, how are you? All right. Fishing on the Yankee Caps, it's one of my favorite things, the history of the boat, Captain Greg, Greg, Uncle Greggy, and then the guys that, that end up getting on this trip. Once again, it was just another smooth trip. For me, the fish is a smaller percentage than the camaraderie. Hanging out with your boys, this is definitely a bro trip where you get out here, you shoot the you know what, and you're able to have a fun time down the rail. You get to know things about your friends that you haven't known before because what happens is cell phone service is gone and you're right where your feet are at and your mind is on fishing and hanging out with your boys. It's how the season guys, because all the other guys, while the sun's still blazing, they start getting their gear together. Guys that have done this trip a few times, wait for the sun to go down. So it's kind of cool and you're not just smoking yourself out here for no reason. Then get your gear ready and go to sleep. Pro tip guys, major pro tip. So when you get on the Yankee, you definitely want to have sheets that tuck well under the mattresses so you're sleeping on your sheets. So many fishermen have slept on these mattresses. You want to have clean sheets. And here's the big one. I'm gonna, I probably shouldn't tell you guys this, but I'm going to tell you this. Are you ready? As soon as you get on the boat, before anybody else does it, it's kind of like getting a rod holder. See the plug right there? So you can plug your phones in, you can plug your, you know, whatever electronic devices. You snag one of those plugs. So that way you can keep your phone charged, your GoPros, your whatever the case may be. So I shouldn't have told you guys that, but I did. Conditions were a little rougher than we wanted, kind of getting out. First day was kind of rainy, but we still did pretty good for it. Expectations weren't super high for this one for just because the first trip wasn't sure what to really expect. It all came out, kind of killed it. You bait guys beat up on the yellow eyes on this trip and the jig bite did not produce as many fish as the bait guys were producing. The big yellow eyes were really keyed in on the bait more than the jig. We saw some that were close to state records come over. They were just big yellow eyes. That was beautiful. Burmese. I did catch a couple really nice red groupers. We have pictures of them, but that's all we get. Had to throw those back. I hooked up on the bottom about 400 feet. Sun is out now. And you can feel this thing digging. I'm guessing it's going to be a little better than the Burmese I just had. This had a little nap inside too. That was glorious. I woke up like, where the hell am I? Ooh. Thanks for the fight, big guy, but you gotta go back. You are out all season. First day, rough start for the morning. Still cleaned up. I got my first coin snapper down here in Florida. Big guy Toro. There's a lot of learning from this trip for it. A lot of times back in Texas, we use a lot of torpedoes. We realized because of the sea anchor stuff on the Yankee cap, drift is very minimal for it, which is pretty nice for it. So I know Chris Doyle killed it on anything that had a lot of flutter. So that's what we switched over to, a lot of flutter. Everybody's kind of having to mix it up, different colors, different weights trying to work through it for. I know the guys in the back kind of powered through and got some on bait, but for the guys with the jigs and whatnot, we still kind of made do for it. A lot of yellow eyes. I'm part of the Texas Slow Pitch Jigging Admin Team, so we got Corbin Orr who came up from Corpus with me. He did pretty good. He got his first yellow eyes for it. First time ever leaving the state of Texas, which is pretty sweet, so I'm glad that Johnny Crew was allowing him to kind of tag along with us. This was a trip where experimentation reigned supreme. I like trips that have that challenge that require me to go out of my normal box when I think a certain depth, a certain fish, and what's going on with our drift. Going under the sea anchor, I got tagged on my dig up and he did do a pretty large run. Coming up easy now. It's like we're out here on the bearing sea. 
coming up easy now. Look at fish, whatever it is. Our drift with the wind the way it was would have put oh us God. out of being able to do what we were doing if it wasn't for the go, really yeah. nice huge sea anchor that Captain Greg throws off the transom of the boat. The sea anchor was in effect exclusively 100% of the time. So best fish for the trip for me by far is my queen. That's been the highlight of everything I wanted to catch. First day, it was pretty exciting catching it in the rain. I got real lucky, I tangled up with a guy. He was able to back off the slack, we were able to get it in. Uh, we fought off porpoises for a lot of our fish, so that was fun trying to get him to come out for it. Yankee Cap's notorious for it, pretty famous for putting fish on the deck. I know some of the guys are a little bummed that there wasn't as many grouper or whatnot for it, but any day now in the office is a huge win for me though. So. Windy, baby. We got that natural air conditioning kicked up right now. This sea anchor just stops the boat dead in its tracks. So, a nice toss off the bow. We're probably doing 15 knots, steady breeze, some heavier gusts. We could normally blow a boat and pick the drift up, but I'm vertical right here and it feels good. The upside to this is it's cool and it should be blazing hot, but we got a killer breeze. <laughs> you want to pitch it with him? Yeah. Oh! oh no. I have never caught an octopus before. So, if you guys can remember the show Spanish Fly, it aired for like 17 years, and the host of the show, Jose, was a great gentleman, and he also wanted to give back as well. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2012. But from there, his daughter wanted to carry on his legacy for giving back. And she started this foundation, Spanish Fly. They help with disaster relief when it comes to like waterways and cleanup. They're taking kids out. They're taking veterans out fishing. We're going to put a link down below. I would love for you guys to check it out and what they're doing. They also have some really nice apparel, but they're helping the next generation to educate them on how to preserve our water as well as how to fish and how to responsibly fish on the water. We love that. It stays right here with us. So we're all in on Spanish fly. Raining. Doesn't bother me one bit. Wow, this is me though. Beautiful. Perfect. Chamber of Commerce weather. Uh, it would be okay if we had a few fish, but uh, yeah, Brian's on next to me. Uh, had one little pickup, but no hookups. Um, I don't think this rain's gonna last, but at least it's not boiling hot. That's all I can say about this. But. You gotta watch my uncle here, TV Tyke. He's speaking, he won't say a word, and he's gonna catch a ton of fish. Nobody's gonna know about it, but I am keeping an eye on him the entire time because I know exactly how he operates. Not even. First one in the boat. Not a bad start here. We'll get a little bit better than this. Whoa. Now am I getting stuck? I have a feeling. Maybe. There was no... Something had a hold of that because something yeah. big. Yep. Yeah. Something messed around with me. I had to afford this or something. Yeah, I'm going to get this thing to 600 feet deep. <laughs> We got the uh, pink and green glow, 500 grams, Johnny Jig, baby. Not real big, but hey, I'll take it. It all eats the same. Probably a little yellow eye or vermi. It was pecking away at the bottom a couple of times, so. Maybe the bite she will turn it on for us. We are getting bottom time. And uh, we're about 500 feet deep, and uh, it's getting started. John just had one on. That went away. We got 100 feet left. 
for this little fish to come up. Something shark or the fish wasn't that big when I started fighting them, and all of a sudden the line's peeling out. It's gotta be a shark. Actually, belly hooked that fish because I felt it tap and I twitched it so I could belly hook it on purpose. It came up belly hook. I called it. If you believe that, I'm gonna tell you about the one time back when uh, Will was dropped behind enemy lines with a parachute. Back in 1943. And just a slingshot. Took out an old full army by himself. I belly hooked it. See him by the tail. Full power, full speed edge. Oh, that's Something that was super cool was we basically had the whole port or starboard side, whichever side we were on, to fish for jigging. We could start from the pulpit and work our jig all the way until you got to the stern and then retrieve it. The sea anchor, whichever side the ball was on, you knew which side to pitch your jig. We had this huge, like almost conga line of everybody rotating, everybody was cooperating, and then it left a really nice corner and stern spots for the bait guys to be able to line up and successfully fish without tangling up, which was nice. I felt big, it was side work. I'm so quick, I side hooked it. I've been on this boat 25 times and I always know that I'm gonna have a great time on it. We're with friends, we're, we're jigging, we're staying up late. I did my best to stay out there on the rail when the bite was hot. Tons of yellow eye snappers coming over the rail right now on the jigs, on the bait. Everybody seems to be getting them. Hands down, this is probably the most delicious snapper in the ocean. I think the state record's like somewhere around 18 pounds for the state of Florida. So they're not, it doesn't get huge. You know, it's not a huge snapper, but it's very, very white, sweet, flaky meat. And uh, this is definitely a sought after fish for us. So the troll was shut down because of that sea anchor, but we were able to jig. Just got trucked on the bottom. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Yellow eyes, that's, that's how aggressive they are. They're also known as silky snapper. Beautiful one just came up the rail on the jig right there by Brian and I just got tight immediately upon hitting the bottom. We would have had several knots of drift speed and our jigs would have been huge and our rods would have been heavy and we would have only been in the average depths of 500 feet. That sea anchor slowed things down enough where I was able to put on lighter jigs that had a lot more flutter and a lot more action. And when I ended up on my, my Ultra Flutter 350, which was actually a little on the heavy side because I was holding bottom so well, that started consecutively catching me yellow eye snapper. Trinity, power three here, 500 feet, right around the job. But man, they, uh, they put some pressure on. A lot of fun. I don't think he's quite as big as my first one. It's amazing how well this sea anchor works. You can see we got white caps. White caps start at 13 knots of breeze. And without a sea anchor, even in this boat, we'd be moving on the drift. But it slows this boat down to virtually nothing. Got color coming up right here. I like to normally like grab them, so I'm sticking my thumb right in their cheek and showing them who's boss. Yellow eye snapper, also known as, as a silky snapper, part of the midwater snapper series. There's one right there in the water. Hey, Roly, we got a loose yellow eye Catch off the back here. <laughs> we saw these guys close a couple years ago, early in the season. Free gap, yellow that's, eye. Hey, that's, that's cameraman. This really is a better specimen. Look at that dog. Look at that. So this is also known as a silky snapper. It's in the midwater uh, snapper category along with queens and black fin snapper, also known as ham bones. This is your yellow eye, arguably the best eating snapper in the ocean. So it's not every trip that I'm able to use that particular jig, but I always keep a couple in my jig bag in the case of exactly what happened on this trip. Chartreuse and Glow 350 Ultra Flutter caught me over a half a dozen beautiful yellow eye snapper. 
This is what it is, man. They're getting bigger. I got dolphined and sharked a total of three times and took both of the 350 Ultra Flutter chartreuses that I had. I just switched out to the one drop 320. It looked like the fish were just kind of keying in on some uh, brighter colors. So I put on the chartreuse. Uh, Chris just pulled over the rail, a very nice yellow eye on our Ultra Flutter chartreuse. So figure maybe I can match the color a little bit, get a little more action on a jig. Sometimes that little switch is just what they key into. And boom, I got popped. We got a nice vermilion snapper. And along with the vermilion snapper, I've got my poor buddies all tangled up here. So we're gonna see if I can't untangle this. I might wanna just cut my jig. It's a tug of war. It's a yellow eye. Now I can say keep pressure on this fish parallel to the water, but I can also just reel into the fish, angle down. Seems like I got him pretty good. Point the rod down, use the rail for a little cushioning and just start getting handle turns on him. Really, this is so much less effort here than it is holding them here. Once I know I have that fish secure, I come down. And now it's just a matter of winching them to the surface. One is incredible. It works better for getting fish up. Uh, and two, it's a, it's a layer of protection to always protect my rod and my gear and put less stress on the rod, really. Although anyone who's using one of these Trinities right now, I've told them all to not hold back. Play with the blank, put pressure on it. The Iowa's nano carbon, nano resin. Absolutely incredible how light and how freaking strong these slow jig rods are. There we go, baby. The silky snapper. One of the best, probably the best eating snapper in the ocean right there. They're yellow eyes. You can tell by the yellow in his eyes, right doc? Not jaundice, it's a yellow eye snapper. Oh, yes, nice, nice yellow eye. eye. There we go. Yes, sir. Nice, sir. Just woke up from a nap and uh, dropped this jig down. Just barely tapped on. First tap, bam, pulled up, and this guy hit it. It's a uh, falling leaf. Action on that. Johnny Jigs falling leaf, 400 gram. Nice yellow eye. Love it. Target species acquired. Thank you, Mark. Oh. Beautiful fish. It will make a, uh, a very nice couple of sandwiches. Ah. Five o'clock. Somewhere. Still a nice fish. All right, my friend, the bite is definitely on. Uh, about 50 feet off the bottom. Not a monster, man, as big as the other boys, but this is a, probably the best tasting snapper there is. Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. Here we get another one. Put this on the night up. Hello, Butters and the Johnny Jigs viewers. We just moved spots. Kind of got a new day going on here and a new bite. Possibly the same species fish though. Feels like a yellow eye snapper. Yeah. Ah, he's still ferocious. 
beautiful yellow eye snapper on the ultra flutter 350 right on the bottom that's what it's all about 500 feet <sighs> don't listen to a word this guy says <laughs> not one word hey ng's hooked up right back there yes sir tight temple reef levitate x Speedy ocean mark bhl 50 power two yellow eye that's some nice chopper tacos. We're good. A lot bigger than I thought he was. Well, night one, it's about dinner time, and we're gonna fire up the grill. We're actually gonna cook up just a few fish for the guys on the boat. But I wanted to show you guys something pretty interesting that we uh, just started stocking in the shop. So it's called a relentless knife, and it has a perpetual edge to it. And you'll see on this side of the blade actually is different from that side. It actually will wear away. You do not sharpen this side of the blade. So as you cut into fish, this knife will essentially sharpen itself. So if you ever were to sharpen it, you just do one side of it. But this is my first time actually cutting a fish personally with it, but I've watched it uh, cut fish many times. So we're gonna cut into this uh, yellow eye snapper. Firing up the grill shortly. We got some hamburgers, hot dogs. Wait till you guys see what this yellow eye looks like meat wise. Let's take a look at this snapper. That's why they say it's the best taste of snapper. Look how just a pure white, very little bloodline in there. And all of us are gonna enjoy this fish and a couple others tonight. So let's get up to the grill. I did get to play with jigs that were smaller and had more flutter and another strategy that I had was I went down in my rod action. I ended up fishing a power two rod out there in 500 feet and that just, again, heavier load, like I've talked about in past videos, it slows down the action, really keeps the jig in the strike zone, makes the jig look like a, a struggling bait fish and then I get just enough pull to get enough flop and that flop delivers a little flutter. Flutter delivers the reaction bite to fish that seemingly had lockjaw. So again, pulling out these types of, of tricks that we do have as jiggers to change rods, reels, to change jigs, colors, and shapes. There is always a way to find a way to catch more fish. So all good things must come to an end and we hate to go, but we have other adventures to get on to, everybody has a number. You tag your fish with a number, and then once you get to the dock, what happens is everybody's tired and we're not paying attention, and the mates are walking around, and they're like, number four! And you're like, four! And then you see them get angry and you're like, four! And then they know that it goes into your cooler. So if you don't want to piss the mates off on a Yankee cap trip, make sure you stand in front of your cooler and yell out your number. If you wanna make them mad, don't pay attention and do that every time. And you could have a great time uh, terrorizing these guys who wanna go home and relax for a little bit. All right guys, big fish pool. If you think you got the biggest fish, pull it out, that wins the money. Biggest snapper, biggest grouper by weight. You're gonna win a rod. And this does not matter what you caught it on other than the troll. A troll is disqualified. That's gonna go on a scale. This one's going to a scale. Last time we were touching the right. 17 point eight crew. 17.82. Yeah, biggest group. Yeah. Yo! Since you're first, I got a Johnny Jigs Pro Jigger for you for that scam so right there. Seven. There's a power six, max 800 load gram. Okay. This is a power two, about a 300 gram rod. Take your choice. Thank you. It's going big and Yeah, hard. baby, let's go. Thank, Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Let's go. welcome. Joe Ziegler, everybody. Big yellow eye, beautiful fish. These are close to state record yellow eye right here. It's in the 18. That's right up there, beautiful yeah, fish. Thanks. Thank you very much. I enjoy your new rod. All right, Well, guys, thanks for watching. If you're uh, prepping for any Yankee trips, know that you can always feel free to call us at the shop and pick our brains about what you need and maybe what you don't need. As always, hope you enjoyed the video. And don't forget, jig, jig on. on. Well, it's been a year now. And I asked Johnny Jigs for a shirt. Still nothing. So I made my own. That's the best I can do. I gotta represent. Good trip though. Love being with these guys.
have a good night.